Are you a control freak? I mean, really, or maybe you uh, micromanage a little bit? Well, I want to give you some tips and tricks today about how to let that go forever. Not only does it really annoy the people around you, (laughs) trust me, because I'm a major control freak, or at least I was, but also it's painful. It's hard to try and keep track of everything and not trust anyone around you to do it right. It is just a miserable way to live. So today I'm going to share with you how to evolve past that into being able to be relaxed and enjoy your life. This is Zen in a Moment. It's a podcast where you can train your brain to stop stressing forever and be the cool, awesome, fabulous person you know you can be. I provide tips and strategies that move you from stressed out to in the flow. Flow meaning feeling light, open, and wise. And I am your host, Zen Cryer DeBrook, stress as guidance expert. All right, man. You know, I got my control freak ways legitimately. Uh, I got them through my mom and my dad. Both of them had their own ways in which they worried about things not getting done right and everything had to be very specific. And over the years, I continued on that track, knowing the people around me, having people be feeling as if I, as if they weren't competent and I didn't trust them. And as my husband has said a couple of times when I've reverted back to my past, I am not a moron. Stop treating me like one. I don't want anyone in my life to feel like I think they're a moron. I love people and I want them to contribute, but there's just this way in which uh, in my upbringing, I got this fear, this this fear inside that something's going to go wrong unless I am around to fix it or I have a really watchful eye on it. Now, you know that I teach the work around the internal guidance system. And what I have found is that all closing behavior comes from fear and it is closing. If it opens you, it doesn't feel like being controlling. It feels like an assertive contribution that you're making to a project or a person or a situation. If it's if your thoughts around needing to be involved in a particular project or an aspect of something around your home um, or in supporting another person and getting it getting a project done, if you're open in your internal guidance system or IGS, and by the way, once again, if this is the first time you've heard this, go to zeninamoment.com where you can feel your internal guidance system for yourself. It's something you have had, you were born with, you can physically feel it. I walk you through an exercise at zeninamoment.com where you can feel this for yourself. And I call these openings and closings. It's how, it, the opening is, is means that what we're thinking is true and in alignment and going to bring us health and harmony and success. And the closing feeling feels like stress, worry, fear, anxiety, overwhelm, frustration, irritation. Those feelings are closing, which means what you're thinking in the moment is not true or not going to happen. And this is an incredibly important aspect of being a control freak because what is going on is inside there is a place in which you're thinking that things are going to go wrong, that it's not going to get done properly, that there's some aspect that you need to be involved or it's not going to be okay. And it's coming from fear. Now, I did a podcast recently around trust, and there's a link to it in the paragraph below. I, I highly encourage you to listen to that. I'm going to review them and uh, the, the aspects of how to know whether you can trust someone and or a situation. I'm not going to review them in depth here because really what I want to talk about is the way it feels when you have this sensation. It's miserable to not be able to relax and trust that everything's going to go well without your input. It's exhausting. And it crushes intimacy. It crushes teammates in in a work environment and and your children in their ability to feel like empowered and smart and, and capable. Us micromanaging, us, you know, not letting people shine. That's really what it is. And we're not doing it on purpose. If, if we knew, if you knew, if you could be on the other side of that controlling and micromanaging behavior, if you could feel how the other person feels in the wake of that, you would never want to do that to the people you care about. And it's so hard. It's almost like a compulsion. It can get so big for some people. Um, so the key here is how to know whether you're being controlling. Now, if you're closed, you're being controlling. What you're thinking about everything going awry is not true. So let me give you an example, right? So I was walking into the shop to find out. We have a shop on our property. My husband was reorganizing, and I was walking into the shop to find out if he wanted lunch. And uh, 
as I walked in, he was on a ladder kind of like in this precarious position trying to get these boxes into place. And I could see clearly from my position um, how he could organize this better. Of course, right? Yeah, you know how that goes. And um, I went, honey, and as I was thinking of giving him advice and direction, I immediately closed, which means what I was thinking in the moment was not true, is not what I needed to be doing. And his response just to the word honey, because it was the right kind of honey that he knows, um, was what, you know, and he knew I was about to give him advice and it was the wrong timing. And I said, nothing, do you want a, sa a sandwich? And he was like, that's not what you were going to say. And I said, yes, that is exactly what I was going to say. I actually came out here. Do you want a sandwich? And he said, yes, I'll be in in 15 minutes. And I turned around and walked away. I was in a moment of micromanagement and it would have turned into, I promise, a whole Saturday of pissed offness for my poor husband because he didn't need my advice and he was already frustrated and it would have just really ruined our afternoon. Now here's another situation. My husband was gonna take something out of the car that was really heavy and he was gonna put it in our wheelbarrow, which was plastic. And he said, I'm gonna go get this out of the car. And I said, do you want help? And he said, no, I got it. I'm gonna use the wheelbarrow. And I immediately thought, oh no, if he puts that, he's gonna drop it into the wheelbarrow and break the wheelbarrow. And I didn't say anything because me, he and I have this place where I'm really working on not being a control freak and I didn't listen to my IGS. I opened that he was gonna break the wheelbarrow when I had that thought and I didn't say anything because of fear of not wanting to upset him, all right? And lo and behold, he broke the wheelbarrow. And later I said, I'm, I knew you were gonna do that. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, I knew you were gonna break the wheelbarrow, that it was gonna be too heavy and it was gonna, you're gonna drop it in too hard and I didn't say anything. And he said, why did you not say anything? And I said, because I get afraid that you're gonna get angry at me giving you advice. And he goes, well, I don't want that to be the case. And I said, well, from now on, when I feel like I really need to say something and I'm open and it's right, I'm gonna tell you. And if you get mad, if you, if you close and you get mad at me in response, I'm gonna say wheelbarrow. And that way you'll know that where I'm coming from is not a bad negative place where I'm being controlling. Because this is still something that comes up for me. I need to work on it. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the practice of it, right? My point is this. In your life, you can have a much more relaxed flow if you use your internal guidance system to suss out when you're supposed to collaborate and be a part of something and when you're not. And this internal guidance system piece is so brilliant at helping you to release. Now the quick thing I wanna just go over is there's four elements to trust. One is, is the person reliable? Are they gonna do what they say they're gonna do? Is the person competent? Do they know how to do what they're doing, right? Number three is, are they sincere? You know, they're, they're, they're in their, their heart is in the right place. And number four is, do they have the resources they need to accomplish this? Now, I go into this in the, another podcast, which is whether you, knowing whether you can trust someone. Trust, right? But if they have all four of those things, you can trust the situation in them and the experience, including with your kids. And you can use your IGS to suss this out. You can also just use your mind, but you'll know if you close at any of the, them not having any of these, one of the, any one of these, and that means there's something you need to talk to them about. Talk about being reliable, talk about their sincerity, talk about their resources, talk about their competency, right? But if they have all four, that means that it's time for you to go in and check your inner control freak and let it go. So I highly encourage you to check out that other podcast. Use your internal guidance system. I am so much happier now that I have been on the track for years now of releasing that experience of uptightness that, that has created burdensome experiences in my life. I want to invite you to have that. Go to zenatamoment.com. There are more podcasts there. Please share this with your friends. Oh my gosh. I would love, 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 love for you to keep spreading the word on this. I want our community to grow. This work makes people happy and relaxed and enjoying their life in such a full-bodied way. Also, comment below. Tell me some of your control freak experiences, right? On a scale of 1 to 10, where would you say you are? I want to know. I would love for you to hear the comments. And then also, I just want to invite you to check out our website in general, zenatamoment.com. Get on our email list if you're not. I have courses and classes and amazing trainings that I would love for you to be a part of that will transform your life forever. It will. It, these are not courses where you take them and you don't use the work. These are courses where you take them and your life actually changes 
for the better permanently. And you're living from this divine source of energy inside your body, your internal guidance system. All right. I really enjoy having you listening to these podcasts and I really enjoy you commenting below. So please do so. And in the meantime, until I get an opportunity to talk again, I'm sending you love and blessings. <laughs>